So we are continuing with the 12 powers. We are following along with the book Power Up by Paul Hasselbeck. We have copies on the side table for sale and we hope that you will read each chapter as we go along for this 12 week series. And today's power is the power of power. Uh, and just so that that isn't too confusing, uh, but what we mean by that is dominion or mastery. This is the power that enables us to attain the end of bringing forth God's ideas on earth, the ability to master, dominate, and control. And Charles Fillmore, when he created the concept of the 12 powers, he located each power at a different place in the body and the power of dominion and mastery is in the throat because you speak the word. And we're going to go into that a little bit more. So don't confuse the two powers of power and strength. Strength, the power of strength, which we studied, I think, the second week, is the, about endurance and perseverance. It's, it's kind of like, strength is like willpower to keep on keeping on, to hang in there. But the power of power and mastery is actually about manifestation. You know, if you are an artist and you're looking at a blank canvas, you can put anything you want on that canvas. There's no limit. There's no, it's infinite possibilities. It can be a simple little face. It can be a masterpiece. It can be anything, anything at all. And this is why uh, this kind of idea is in A Course in Miracles where it says, there's no order of difficulty of miracles. For if you are talking about ideas, the idea of a flower, the idea of a universe, equally easy. Infinite ideas, infinite possibilities. And before the universe was created, when there was only the emptiness, only the void, the mind of God had the idea of a universe. And it was so. It, it just exploded into the emptiness and for all we know, more than one universe. Fillmore taught the idea, this is our trinity, mind, idea, expression. Divine mind had the idea of a universe and decided that it would be created, that it would find expression. And then we do the same thing. We're the children of God. If you have uh, an idea in your head, now I looked this up, I don't speak Spanish, but I think Pero is dog. Okay, yay, I can, I'm getting a thumbs up. Okay, so the word you use is only a symbol. Whatever language you speak, maybe I should have cho chosen Mandarin, and then pro probably nobody in the room speaks Mandarin. I should have looked that up for dog. But it's just a word that is a symbol for the idea. And when we speak a word, the purpose is so that the idea is, that is in my mind, I say the word so that the same idea will be in your, word, in your mind. The word is just a symbol for an idea. So when we create, it's because we have an idea and then it's manifested. Everything in your life that you do is because you had the idea first. You wouldn't be here today if you didn't have the idea, oh, it's potluck Sunday, I think I'll go to church. Did anybody bring food? I didn't even look. Do we have food? Yes. We do. Yay, we have food. And 
in the book of Genesis, it tells us about the word of God. It doesn't say word. It says God said, well, if God said, and that's a word, right? Let there be light, and there was light. So the word of God is the act of creation. The same for us. The idea is the act of creation. Mind, idea, expression. Mind, word, manifestation. When we see the word Christ, we interpret the scriptures metaphysically. We know that Jesus' last name was not Christ. His parents were not Joseph and Mary Christ. It's a title that was given to, to him by his followers. Metaphysically, it means the idea of the person, perfect person. God had the idea of humankind as perfect. And Jesus was the ideal person. He achieved that ideal. But at the level of sense consciousness, you can think of power as someone who has power over other people, or you can think of someone who is powerless. That's at the sense consciousness level. But at the spiritual level, we're talking about dominion and mastery that enables us to attain the end of bringing forth God's ideas on earth. That's what we're about, is using our divine power to bring forth God's ideas on the earth. And the way Paul Hasselbeck likes to put it is, to be the best Christ you can be. That's what we're working on. That's what we use the power of power, mastery, or dominion for. I was blessed when I was getting my training up at Unity Village to have a renowned Unity teacher, who's no longer, he's made his transition, named Ed Rabel. And I remember him saying this. I heard this from his own lips. And although I have read many of the transcripts of his classes since, I frequently go to him as a source when I'm researching for my lessons. I remember him saying, if you need your religion to tell you not to kill people, <coughs> unity is not for you. And I that stuck with me. I wasn't sure I was really comfortable with it. Because I didn't like the idea that unity wasn't for anybody. But what was the point he was trying to make? And when I was preparing this lesson, it, this saying of his came back to me. And only now, only yesterday, when I was preparing this lesson, did I realize what he meant. Or at least this is what I think he meant. In our culture, have you ever heard this saying, you know, just be a good person. You know, not a lot is required, just be a good person. My father was uh, agnostic. My mother was raised Baptist, but she wasn't really into it. You know, she was kind of like a cultural Baptist. She sent me to Sunday school but she never went to church. I don't remember her praying or reading the Bible or trying to teach me about religion. Uh, so this is the moral compass that I was raised with. And I think a lot of people in this country are raised with this general idea. Just be a good person. And what is that? Well, be honest, be polite, be law-abiding, be sober that kind of thing. And of course, we know what it means to be a bad person, a thief, a liar, a bully, someone with loose morals. We all have a kind of a picture of that. 
even if you weren't raised strict religion of any type, you have a kind of a feeling of what it is to be a good person or a bad person in our society. This also includes the Christian idea that we are all sinners, that we are all, that we have a sinful nature. This uh, little drawing I, I came across, the first time I've seen this, so I'm saying that this is a new way of depicting the idea that we as human beings have a sinful nature that we inherited from Adam, the first man, according to the book of Genesis. That we're born bad, that uh, there's a song, bad to the bone, defective from the factory. Everybody is a sinner. We're all sinners, it says. So the purpose of the power of power and dominion is to bring forth God's ideas on the earth, to be the best Christ you can be. That's different than saying we're just trying to avoid punishment, eternal punishment, isn't it? It's a different paradigm. It's a different way of looking at your life's purpose and the meaning of your life. Our understanding is not that you are evil or born sinful, but that we all have acquired this foggy, distorted view of reality. We have error beliefs. We, have, we believe myths and stories that we have absorbed from our culture or that are the result of some trauma of our past. And in quantum living, we call them shadows. They are absolutely endemic. Everybody has some kind of shadow as a result of their life experiences, usually from a very, very early age. So just like this gentleman, he's all dressed up for work, but he's sound asleep. We go through our lives, we are intending to deal with the physical world in a physical way at the physical level. And it's only because we are asleep to our true nature. One of the things that you will hear frequently from me is what we are about is wake up, clean up, grow up, and show up. To wake up means to realize that you are a spiritual being. You're not just a meat-eating plains ape. You are a spiritual being. To clean up means to release these myths, these stories, these beliefs that have clouded our understanding of our true nature. And after we clean that up or in the process of cleaning that up, then we have to grow into our true selves. We have to learn how to use our power. We have to acquire the habit of using our power all of the time. So here is, oh, let me finish that. And then as we grow up, then we're able to show up. We're able to be the city on the hill we're able to be a blessing to the world, to assist the world in transformation. That's what we are about. So this is what I think. The world does not need to be told how bad it is. It needs to be shown how good it can be. This is what we are doing. You know, Jesus said, Love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Certainly, that is a much higher standard than just be a good person. That is 
a whole other way of looking at life. He went on to say, be perfect. Wow. This is not stop sinning. This is be perfect. And he is our teacher. He is the one we are following. So Jesus did not come to save us from hell. He came to save us from mediocrity. Of course, if every person on the planet would just be a good person, the world would be better. But it would not be all that it can be. Jesus' vision for us is the kingdom of heaven on earth, which we create by using the power that we have from our divine nature, seizing that power and nurturing it and using it in every aspect of our lives. This is what it means to be released from error beliefs. So here is an affirmation from the book. I use the power of power, mastery, and dominion to overcome errors, thoughts, stories, myths, shadows, trauma, and cultural limitations in order to be the best Christ that I can be. Pardon the um, typo. The idea is that we use this power in order to transform ourselves so that we can then show up for the world and be a blessing to the world and assist the world in transformation as well. So how do we do this? Growing in power, it's a choice. Every challenge is an opportunity. One of the books that I'm reading this summer, I haven't read it yet, uh, it, as part of the uh, Integral Ministry Program course that I'm taking, is entitled, What's in the Way is the Way. Your challenges show you where you need to heal and grow. Whatever it is that annoys you, that causes you to be stressed or irritated in any way, that is, what, that is showing you this is something that needs to be healed. Why are you stressed or irritated? You're an eternal being. God is your father. How can you be stressed? Well, it happens. It happens because we forget. But once you know that every challenge is an opportunity to heal, you can begin living from that realization just that realization is a huge step forward. And the tools we use are affirmative prayer, denial and affirmation. I deny that this challenge has any power over me. We use meditation so that we are connected daily to the mind and heart of God and given the guidance that we need on how to do our spiritual work and how to love God and our neighbors. We study, we read books, we take classes. I'm giving the Quantum Living course now. The registration is closed. I'll give it again in the fall. And we have our community. We have our faith community. We need each other. We light each other the way one candle lights another. So here are five power affirmations. Don't say them yet. I am spirit. I am sinless. I am eternal. I am the beloved child of God. I have the power to create my world. Now we're going to say these uh, 
in the book it says you should say your affirmations with passion. So we're going to put some oomph into these five affirmations. So together say, I am spirit. I am spirit. Now tell your neighbor, you are spirit. And we affirm together, we are spirit. This is how it goes, okay. Together, I am sinless. You are sinless. We are sinless. I am eternal. You are eternal. We are eternal. I am the beloved child of God. You are the beloved child of God. We are the beloved children of God. I have the power to create my world. You have the power to create your world. We have the power to create our world. Amen, so be it, and so it is. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs>